Well, howdy, 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 nearly senior citizen here. Greetings, boys and girls, and welcome to this. Welcome to the DA. First off, bom dia. Dear great. Ahanyo aseo. Boreda. Yo regelt. Matma. Good morgan. Go morgan. Privyet. Guten Tag. Kalimera. Bonjour. Ohio. Labas Ritas. Buenos dias. Today there's not much I'm going to be doing. But I mean, I've got at least four videos today, reaction videos to come up with. And I've got, well, it's all K pop, no less. Plus, I've got a couple others past that, so there's like uh, going to be at least five grand total videos today, counting this one. At least five reaction videos, so that's cool. Very, very good. When I woke up, because I had fallen asleep, when I woke up, I was freezing to death. I put this shirt here on top of me space heater and then waited for five minutes. Oh my gosh, it was so cold. And then when I put this shirt on, oh, it was like heaven. It was a nice warm shirt. Thumbs up. Am I going to keep this accent up the entire time? Entirely possible. Ah, no, nah, I'm going to drop it now. One day I'm going to do it. I'm going to be reading Poe's The Telltale Heart tomorrow. Or later today, it's hard to say. Except this is going to be read in um, The Grumpy Scotsman Ruins the Classics, number 43. It's a tale by Poe. Some bloody lunatic kills someone because he can hear his heartbeat. There we go, let's start. And so it's going to be like that. And I'm just going to be a grumpy Scotsman reading these things and just being it's like, well, what the hell is this guy? Well, this guy's just a bloody idiot, isn't he? And doing that while reading it. So, thumbs up, it's a plan. It's not really even a plan yet. It's a vague idea. I've even got ideas for uh, title cards and, and stuff. So, that's pretty cool. I'm hopefully going to get that one done here. Thumbs up. Uh, past that, I walked all the way down to the post office today. Of course, I mean, that's part of what I do on my constitutional. Right now, I'm up to about seven miles when I go on my walk. Uh, it takes about an hour and a half. And that's why I'm so sad about being uh, so negative in my bank account and running out of cannabis. Uh, when I run out of cannabis before the third, I'm going to start losing my hands that first day that I run out. Oh boy. I'm not going to be doing very well. Uh, if, I'm all, if I'm less than a week without cannabis, I am not going to be probably much fun. I mean, you see, I talk with my hands, even my semi-paralyzed one. These, the uh, tendons in this arm, the hand here, are getting so tight and contracted. It hurts like the devil all the time, and I can, if I want to pull that back, I really got to fight, and it's just a mess. But I talk with my hands, and I'm not going to be talking with my hands pretty soon. First day that I run out of cannabis, the hands are going to go. Because if I'm not smoking cannabis every couple hours, I hurt so much. We'll see how exciting this gets. Because without pain control, I don't do well. I mean, I... One of the things that happened to me that started my uh, disability was I would... Yeah, it's time to talk about that one. You see, 
In 1989, I was 28 years old and I started work as a nurse's assistant because I needed money. And then I found out that working as a nurse's assistant was something that was incredible and I really enjoyed it. I loved working in healthcare. I then spent, after that, the next 15 or so, well, 89 to 99 to 2003, so really it was only 14 years. 2003? Yeah, 2003 because uh, I started in 1989 and then I stayed working in healthcare all the way up to 2003. Now what happened in 2003 was way back in 2002 I hurt my back again as a nurse's aide. I've hurt my back quite severely probably a good eight nine times working as a nurse's aide that was my body telling me something but I enjoyed working in healthcare so I ignored my back and even though I damaged my back severely many times I kept working as a nurse's aide and I was the kind of guy that by I work nights largely and you, you change people that are incontinent and you move them from one side of a bed to another so that they don't get pressure sores. That's during the night time if you do uh, nurse aid work in a nursing home during the, during the night. So I would spend my, my time doing that. To get it done you can't do two people at a time you know, you and another nurse's aide working on each side of a bed so that you can do stuff so that you don't hurt yourself. You don't have time. We would go into rooms and each person would work with a client, a resident. And so, quite frequently, you would be on one side of the bed, lean over the bed, grab a person by the incontinent pad, lift them up, straighten up and bring them onto the other side of the bed where you are, set down a new pad, roll them over, wash them up, go from there. So I would be lifting up a hundred and some odd pounds, hundred, you know, anywhere from 80 to 200 and some odd pounds a person just by leaning over bed, grabbing, lifting, setting them down again. And I did that for, well, from 1989 to 2001 during which time, like I said, I injured my back severely and sincerely. In 2002-ish, I was working with a resident who needed <clears throat> to get up out of bed and use the commode. She had had a toe to hip cast because she'd broken her femur. You break your femur, you need to have a cast from all the way, your entire leg, to keep that leg mobile so the bone heals. Oh, it's a mess, because if you have to go to the bathroom or anything, you need help so that your leg doesn't get destroyed. Well, I was bending down properly, bending at the knees, not my back, and I was moving her leg so that she could sit. And in my lower back, it felt like someone took, well, two people, one on each side, sledgehammers, lit and went wham into my low back. You could hear it. It sounded like somebody had taken big fists and got bam, bam into my back. It echoed in the room. Hurt like hell. I was crying in pain that day. They had me in the therapy room with ice on my back. It was terrible. I spent... Wow remembering back it was so much fun and when I say so much fun I am of course being ironically because this is the thing that destroyed my career and my life <laughs> after that my back was wiped out I can't lift anything more than 10 or 15 pounds without the pain signals in my back going into complete overload all the time. They're always screaming like I just hurt myself. Even after all this time, the only times it's not doing that is when, well, smoking cannabis with an appropriate amount of narcotic pain relief on top of it. 
So I take methadone and I smoke cannabis for pain. I take the maximum amount of uh, methadone, 20 milligrams a day. For the VA, they won't give me anymore. In fact, they need to try and bring me down from the amount I'm taking. But the amount I'm taking, I can't have less because the back injury that I had gave me restless leg syndrome. And the only thing that knocks that out is 20 milligrams of methadone plus one milligram of an anti-Parkinson's drug called Ropinirole that they have discovered works for restless leg. But I need a narcotic with the Ropinirole or it doesn't work. Talk about agony because when I have restless leg syndrome, I can't lie down because you can't lie down with restless leg. And I can't sit down, but I can't stand either. And that's not good, because when my restless leg is going, I got massive anxiety to go with it. Yay! So I've got to take narcotics and that other thing to knock that out. But my back is still wiped out. I can't carry anything that weighs 20 pounds or more, because no matter what it is, even through the cannabis and all, if I go to lift something, all of the alarms just go ring, ding, 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 and oh boy. Chronic pain is fun. But because of that, I couldn't work anymore. I spent a year on my duty where they put me into the kitchen where I changed uh, I filled up salt and pepper shakers and I put salt and pepper shakers on the tables and I cleaned up the dining room and then I helped feed people. I went from myself from being the kind of guy who quickly got everything done and as a nurse is a my residents love me. They all love me and I felt great about that. And that was good and my nurses loved me. They really liked it when I worked on their side and then I worked on their halls. And then I got wiped out and I've not been working since then. I've been on disability since, but not for my back, for the depression that I've had since. I have had it so bad where I have been close to uh, you know, agoraphobia just from depression and this was while my wife was alive and now that she's gone oh boy well thank you very much this is a huge vlog and I didn't mean for it to be this long just me yammering on like this thank you so very much I'm going I've got all those videos coming up I need to get work on those you take care have a great day today if you can, please donate to help get me out of here, this place here, this tiny box. I need a home or I'm going to become homeless. My brother-in-law needs me out of here weeks ago. Or he needs to start charging me about 500 bucks a month and he still needs me to move out. So at any time... I'm going to be finally told, no matter what I'm paying for Brent, either the too much 260 for this tiny box that I'm paying for right now, or the 500 that I'd be paying. Either way, it's I've got to get out of here. If you can donate to my GoFundMe for uh, getting me a home, that would be awesome. If you can't. It's okay, don't worry about that. You gotta take care of yourself first before you take care of others. But if you can, please, it will, I would appreciate it so much. I don't wanna be homeless. And I know my wife would not want me to be homeless. Even though she's been dead for over two years now. So you take care. I, uh, that's the hand that hurts. Oh boy. <laughs> you take care. I'll see you on the flip side. And I'll see you in the upcoming videos. Take care.